Hello, my name is Bill Vincent. Welcome to another Downloads from Heaven. I really believe there's so much that God can get into over the next year. Powerful things are taking place. But I really believe we are on the way to something. I'm not just preaching sermons. Hallelujah. I'm not just releasing prophetic nuggets. I'm not just releasing prophetic downloads. I am actually releasing things that I believe are building a momentum for what God is about to do. And I hope that you're ready for it. If you would like to invite us to your ministry or church, click the link in the description, revivalwaysglory.ministries.com, and you'll be able to find us there and invite us. And we have a lot of things that we believe in that we could really see move powerfully right there in your church, right in your ministry, even after we leave. God bless you, and we're about to get into some things very good here. New Apostolic Realms. Sounds like a good message to me. We're going to get into it in just a moment. God continues to move, and some have been left behind. Whether we like it or not, there's a lot of people within the body of Christ that have been left behind. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be one of those people. I want to be moving with God. I want to be moving in wherever God wants to move. I want to respond to when he says, go this way, I want to go. And when he says, go that way, I want to say yes. Hallelujah. But there are people being left behind, and I really really am not happy to even say that but there's a religious mindset a religious way i'm talking not not talking about relationship i'm talking about religion that is being left behind in this hour god continues to move and people are being left behind throughout the word of god we see growth and change taking place within people this has been a biblical understanding of things faith arises with patriarchs to establish the generations and those in bondage are set free and then called to move forward. No matter who you are, you have to move forward. The cloud moves on. And the people take new dwellings. And there are changes of leadership and delegations of authority. Old covenants are abandoned because the new covenants are being established. If you listen to any of the sermons in the recent weeks and months, We've been leading up to what I'm talking about right here. Hallelujah. And I'm going to emphasize some of the things we've talked about so that we can really get this today. Hallelujah. The church moves as a witness to gather the lost. Leaders are raised up. And the process of God continue to unfold. But all the way, we see that there are always those who chose not to continue onward. There's always those that chose not to continue, not to go where God said go. Whether it is the distraction of self and its sin, or the following of false gods, lack of faith in God's way, or being preoccupied with becoming like the other nations. So much of the time, far too many of God's people fall away, preferring to remain as they are rather than moving on to what God is doing next. By closely looking at the New Testament, we see many issues that arose within the church continue to toward the first century. So many things. But you got to understand, even the disciples, as they followed the, the one true God, and they, they saw the miracles, they saw the resurrections, they saw the power of God, they, they knew who he was, they knew who he was of, hallelujah. Everything about him, 
but yet yeah, they had doubts. They had a, a lack of understanding. They did not 100% embrace everything along the way. See, worldliness, false teachings, demonic supernatural deceptions, falling back into the religion via the Old Testament, sexual immorality, and the early church faced all of these and more. So why would the early church, who actually got to hug the very God we know as God, Jesus, the Son of God, they got to touch, they got to hug, they got to embrace, they got to set under an actual physical vision. Hallelujah. Although our cultures and technologies are vastly different, people are still the same. So generally speaking, how do we define instances when Christ is not allowed to continue building his church? So that's what the thing is. God is wanting to move in new apostolic realms, and we're about to get into some of this information. But at the same time, there's places where he's just not allowed to move. We're like, God, come. God, move. And, and, and at the same time, he's not allowed to do the very thing that we're asking him to do. So generally speaking, how do we define More specifically, what term can we provide for determining why renewals God gives to restore can be experienced or even made into a movement, but not established in a way the church can continue into the next step of restoration? What prevents people from moving onward into the next of God? Into the next. What is next? God, over the years since I've been a born-again Christian for over 30 years of ministry and, and being a Christian, so many things have happened in my life. But we continue, continually have heard over and over and over again. God said, I'm doing a new thing. Guess what? That's the next. Hallelujah. And so many Christians, so many God-fearing people have been left behind. So when what was once new is not the Spirit of the Lord is now emphasizing. So in short, the old wineskin containing a spirit of demonic, I want to say this word right, Denominationalism. See, we have this denomination understanding. Every time, when I was young in the Lord, I'd go to churches in different places and meet a lot of people, and they would always say, what denomination are you? And I got to the place to where I was non-denominational. I'm not affiliated with this denomination or this denomination. I'm affiliated with the Son of God, Jesus, hallelujah, the Son of God, God the Father, hey, and the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We're going to get into some more right after this. So don't go anywhere. tonight is the spirit of denominationalism keeps people in old wineskins. See, we have already touched on why denominations form and how this is not limited to historic groups which have dominated the Christian culture. But as a movement grows or movements, let me get plural, 
grow and take on the attitude of who we are is bigger and better. They stress organizations. They stress organizational aspects of priorities to the extent that they ignore individual needs and considerations. And the larger the organization, the more deeply rooted, assumed, and expected this mode of operation becomes. So we've got to understand religion and, and, and just these religious groups that just keep closing us up into each other. Oh, it's brother this, brother that, brother this. I love that we have brothers and sisters in the Lord. I'm Brother Bill Holiday. But you've got to understand, sometimes our religion closes us up to where none of that out there, none outside the four walls can get in, and it becomes a religion mindset. But the new apostolic realms are going beyond that. Hallelujah. But not only are the needs of people devalued for the sake of corporate. I said corporate. Interests. The very life of God departs from fellow, uh, fellowship itself. Although God anoints people and events, first and foremost, he anoints individuals. And being the case, how, come on, it being the case that many are called, few are chosen. There are multitudes of people anointed with Christ's grace in his body. But God chooses those who, whose obedience has become a new lifestyle. See, God chooses those who have obedience as a way of life. And it is the chosen who demonstrate the authority to establish ministry. Not only with fruit, but with longevity. But as we have seen, not only in Scripture, but during our lifetimes, many do not finish as strongly as they start. I used to, oh my goodness, I used to have ministers and ministries that would say, uh, ministers especially would come up to me and say, oh, I used to have that zeal. I used to have that hunger and that desperation. I used to have that excitement when I would preach and talk about God. I, would, I used to have that. And, and one day it's going to go away for you too. Well, I tell you what, if it goes away to the degree that, <laughs> I, to a certain degree, that means I'm not saved. I'm not, I'm not the, I'm not a son of the most high God. I don't know about you, but I want to be on fire and hungry for God to move more than ever before all the time. And don't get me wrong, I'm not talking about having a false facade. You don't have to have un hunger uh, that is outward, everybody can see, but you can have a desperation like, God, I really want to see you move. Even when I'm preaching right here in this video, with no one else really hearing me in the natural, but, but I know people here and there may hear it, I, I feel the anointing, I feel the presence of God. I feel as though I could put my hand up on that screen and you could be touched and healed, set free and delivered because I know that I know that presence is moving. So receive something right there. Hallelujah. Some do not finish at all. Come on, it's not about really how you start your race and how you finish your race as much as sometimes don't even finish. but are taken out by various wrong decisions with always that will point to a lack in their character. See, the Lord divests himself in the apostle. Their ministry produces a group. And we call these churches and networks and movements or even ministries and so on. The group carries a particular spiritual DNA Christ gave to the founder. This can be generally or even genetically, hallelujah, enhanced 
by receiving the next move of God to restore the church and establish the bride. See, I don't know about you, but God's coming back for a glorious church without spot or without wrinkle. That means he's going to clean us up. <laughs> he's going to get us all set free. Hallelujah. But he's also going to get us so hungry and desperate for him that we're believing and moving and touching and doing all that we know to do. Because he's coming back for a church that's not dead. But can also become diseased by turning away from the eternal purpose. Refusing to go on as the Spirit of the Lord changes course. See, God's changed course so many times in my life. It's not like that God doesn't change, but sometimes the course of our lives are changing. Our world is changing. There's things that happens today that, oh my goodness, <laughs> I would have never imagined in a million years would be happening. So since the life of God created what organizations try to self-protect such wineskins, not only prevent a group from receiving what God wants to give them that is new, but it also causes them to quench the life of what was previously received. Therefore, denominationalism has already taken place. Come on. Hallelujah. It's already taken place in all denominations. I'm not leaving anybody out. And by remaining focused... That's a powerful word right there. Of what we are organizing quickly becomes no more than a reminder of what we were because of where God was. As time unfolds, the group may continue to become bigger, but it most certainly doesn't become better. See, I don't know about you, but I would rather have 100 people in my church that are on fire for God, even 20 people. There was a time when the Lynchville Revival broke out. I'm telling you, when it broke out, we had 12, just like the disciples, hallelujah, 12 that were just on fire, hungry, desperate, not perfect in any way. But God showed up and moved in a powerful way. And I would always rather have that small church, that small place. And then you go to some of the bigger churches and it's there's so much sin, so much clicks, so many clicks of people just, oh, it's this group of people and this group of people. You know what it's like? And I'm going to end with this because I believe this needs to be a part two. Hallelujah. God bless you. I know you're excited. But a lot of times, churches almost become like high school. Hallelujah. We have the cheerleader table. Come on. We have the, the nerds is what we used to call them. Hallelujah. I might have been part of that for a brief moment. The jocks, the thugs, whatever it is, we have all these little cliques. Now, I'm not saying we have those cliques in the, <laughs> in the church, but we do have these little groups that happen in church to where this handful of people mingle and embrace this handful of people but they will never ever embrace that handful of people over there and that one over there will never embrace this one and this one and i'm telling you that's the way the church has become it's religion it's organizations it's like a corporation i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you there's a new apostolic realms that are coming and are going to be established in the body of christ we're going to see a mighty move of God, and we're going to have to get out of our cliques, out of our ways, and begin to embrace all kinds of oddness that's coming to the body of Christ, because the church is about to grow, and it's going to grow because of what's outside these four walls. Hundreds of thousands are going to come to know Jesus in such a magnitude, and we're going to need to embrace, no matter what color hair they have, color skin they have, many piercings they have, 
or even tattoos they have. doesn't matter if you think this might be sin or that might be sin. But when they come in, if your church is really pressing on and pressing onward, they can be set free. They can be delivered just like you and me. Come on. Powerful good, goodness is coming. So with that said, we will continue this next week. God bless you. Be sure to check everything else out. And I really hope to see you soon. God bless you. Have a good one.